So first things first, I decided to switch out this white Teflon tape with a thicker gray Teflon tape. Um, this stuff is probably twice the cost, but it's also twice the thickness as far as I can tell. Definitely seals better than the white stuff does. I had a couple minor leaks around the pumps and uh, this stuff definitely really took care of it. So I went ahead and fixed up all the things. Now we have a water test run before we actually do our first maiden voyage brew. So I'm going to put some water in the hot liquor tank to start with. I don't really have a sight glass, so my fancy measuring stick. And we'll probably fill up to like seven or eight gallons, just enough to test her out. All right, now that we got all of our water, we'll go ahead and pretend that the cranes are in the mash tun. Hook up our hoses. Tray down there in case we uh, have any leaks. So here we go. We're going to go from out of the tank through the pump and up through the mash tun. And I've heard some good things about uh, minimizing your dough balls if you sort of underlay the water from the bottom instead of putting the water in first. So we'll assume that we got some grain in here. Go ahead and open our valves. These aren't self-priming pumps, so they're chugger pumps. We'll give that a minute. And there we go. Okay, yeah, filling up the mash tun. Water's above the false bottom already. Now we had about eight gallons of water inside the uh, hot liquor tank. I'll get my fancy measuring stick again. And let's see, we'll put maybe about four gallons in there. So there we are at the four gallon mark. So there's about five and a half gallons, just enough to go over. It's about a half an inch of over that temperature probe, maybe a quarter of an inch. So this way when I'm mashing, I can actually see the uh, temperature I'm at here. I'll go ahead and uh, start warming this thing up. Alright, we've got the flame on. Heating her up. So the mash temp is up to about 153. I killed the heat. And I'm going to let this sit for, I don't know, maybe half an hour or so and see if we lose any heat. Uh, again, afterthought on the uh, water, the hot liquor tank, but I'm heating up the sparge water now. This will be the you know, sort of fake sparging, or mashing water, or mashing air and water. <laughs> if you look in here, we just have hot water, no grains. So, uh, yeah, got to do a test run on it first before we do anything else. Okay, so I just killed the flame. Got our uh, sparge temp. Well, it's a little higher. I was looking for 170, but sparge water's ready to roll. Here's the mash kettle. Still hovering around that 152 mark, it looks like. 152, yep. So we haven't really lost any temp, uh, really lost anything yet there. Lost maybe half a degree, so not too bad. I mean, that's considering the, the flame is out. So, 
and it's probably been sitting there for a good 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So that's pretty good. That means I probably won't have to heat, heat the flame really on much during the mesh cycle. Of course, at this point, we would be recirculating, so that might that may have an impact. I'm going to go ahead and set up our recirc now, assuming we're recirculating. I knew that was going to happen, that's why I brought that out. Alright, so up here, research port is going to be the out, and then the in for the pump is going to be the bottom of the mesh time. So here's our research assembly. I don't know if you guys remember this from a past video. Real simple. Just go ahead and put it into the other side of the recirc valve. And then we're going to just make this fit the pedal. So assuming this is a five gallon batch, we need to bring this guy down here so we're not causing too much turbulence. All right, we will go ahead and open up our valves. Going halfway with that for now, we'll see how we do with that. Open up the pump valve. We'll let that air air bubbles go through there. Alright, so we got the pump on. And there we go. We've got our recirculating mash going. Of course we can just adjust this flow here. It'll probably be a little higher than that. I know this is measured for both 5 and 10, so uh, well, there you go. That's going to be what our weird circuit and mash looks like. And actually, I'd, I had realized I can open this, this valve all the way. Control our flow right down here at the pump. And we turn that down a little bit more so we don't need to go nuts. There you go. Got a nice, nice flow there. So we started the recirculation, we lost about 5 degrees, 6 degrees. It's up and around 145. Go ahead and turn on the heat again. I kind of figured that might happen. So, yeah, so when we're recirculating, I guess we'll have to have the flame on. Probably low. Recirculating is still pretty good there. And then, uh, I guess realistically here, we're still going to have the kettle shut probably while we're mashing. Keep the much heat in there as we can. It'll give us a few minutes and we'll see how uh, how we do with temperature. So it's been sitting in here for about a half an hour um, and it only moved a half a degree before I started the recirculating. So the recirculating definitely killed a little bit of heat so we'll uh, have to take that in consideration in part of the process. So that didn't take long at all. Turn on the heat, brought it up to 152 within maybe three minutes if that. Now what I did was I turned that, that flame down really low. So we will see with it that way if we're going to maintain recirculating at 152 or if it's going to continue to climb. So if it's going to continue to climb, I guess we're going to have to play with this heat and kill it from time to time. But uh, we'll see what we'll see what we look like when we have it barely on. If it'll maintain that 152 during a recirculating so period. Pretend to be here. It's going to be thirsty. Cloudier than I thought it would be. Maybe that's just the Golden Promise uh, rains there, but cheers. Mm. That's good. Yeah, the mosaic definitely melted out a little bit because this, this, this I brewed a few months ago. Yeah. Good stuff. So, here we have the flame is off. It's been off for probably a good 10 minutes or so. We are still recirculating. And we are sitting at 151. 
So, just got to keep fooling with this, I guess, and figuring out, you know, I mean, the kettle is doing pretty good as in this layer. Losing a little bit of heat, not a ton, during recirculating. So I might have to fire this burn on from time to time. It is a manual stand, so it's, you know, it's going to have to be expected. Maybe in 15, 20 minutes, I'll fire the burner a little bit. But notice it comes up to temp real fast, so I only have to turn it on for a minute or two. I have to turn it back on again, turn it off again. Um, apparently, if I leave the burner on really low, it almost off, it just eventually goes out. So, um, you know, it's a trial process. We'll figure it all out eventually. Not too bad. We only had to keep on the heat a couple of times between the sparge water and the mesh kettle. I, I think I've only turned the sparge water heater on for a couple minutes once this entire time. This has been circulating for about an hour. So, you know, that sparge water is sitting at a 170. And, you know, you can complain about that. I mean, these kettles are holding their heat pretty well. As long as you don't keep opening them. I mean, you know, with this one, it's losing heat because we're recirculating, we're moving the water around, or fake work. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So we're going to go ahead and get this set up for our sparge. Let's see how that goes. So first things first, we'll turn off the pump, shut our valves. We don't need any accidents here. Uh, so we're going to be coming out of the hot liquor tank through the pump. We're going to go up through the spar arm now. And this cable is not long enough. So let's go ahead and grab one of the longer ones I made. So this here is something that I saw someone doing. I decided to repl replicate it. Basically, put your quick disconnect up on the top lid for the fitting. Inside is a little whirly gig. So if you take a look at here real quick, I don't know if you can really see that, but it's basically a little arm that's going to spin. So we'll show you that in action here in a second. So we're going to go from the hot liquor tank through the pump up to the sparge arm. And then on the other side, we're going to come out of the mash kettle. Through the pump. And up into the boil kettle. So these cables, I'm probably going to end up making a couple more sizes just to, so some of these connections aren't ridiculously long. Like this one doesn't obviously need to be all that long. But that's what we got, so that's what I'm going to use here. And that's pretty much what we got there. So again, just a quick overview. So we're going to come out of that hot liquid tank through the pump, up through the spark arm, out the bottom of the mesh ton through this pump, and then up into the boil kettle. So uh, let's go ahead and give this a shot. I'm going to crank open these valves here. And then we're going to mess with our flow rate at the pumps. So we'll just crack this open a little bit, because we did, we wanted this whole process to take about 45 minutes. So that's that. And then over here, we're going to crank this valve open. We don't have a valve up here. So the same deal here, we're just going to pop this open a little bit. And we're going to give this a minute just to kind of fill up because there is a lot of tubing that it has to kind of go through. I want to make sure there's no air bubbles. And uh, we'll go ahead and give this a shot. So first things first, we're going to turn this guy on, start filling up the kettle. Okay, so a little bit of fooling around with the pumps, but we got it, we got it working now. So yeah, I did have to switch out the, uh, the one cable. So it was too big, but I'm going to have to make some different cable right now. A couple more of these connectors and a couple short hoses. Alright, so like let's go ahead and pop this open. There's that little whirly gig in there. The sparge arm working pretty well. 
And then over here, we've been filling up the boil It's going in really slowly. So I have the pump down here turned barely open. Same deal over here. A little bit more on this side just because the uh, spar drum won't spin if this wasn't cranked up a little bit more. But we'll see. We'll check our flow right here and we'll see how we do. So the spar motor is still sitting around one, uh, 168 now, so I guess I could turn on the flame. I've heard about five gallons in here now. So that's. I just put spar for about a gallon or two now. I don't remember how much was actually in there when we started. So. And, uh, well, we, we've gone up to 160, so I guess if we wanted to mouse this out at 170, we're probably going to have to fire up the flames and get it to that, that rate. So, again, the rain process, we'll do it now one by one step at a time. Yeah, we're about seven gallons, so we'll pull that, we'll pull that good. Assuming this is a five gallon batch beer, with the old system, six and a half gallons boiled down to, to five, then some change. So we're at about seven. We'll let it boil for a bit and we'll see where we're at. I'm not going to boil it for an hour, but I do at least want to get it up to a boil and then see how quickly we can chill it down. So we'll boil it. And then we're going to test out our chilling process. We're at about 195. So I got my water chiller hooked up. We got the water coming in. We're out just, just to the end of the driveway there. And I'm going to go ahead and hook up our hoses for the whirlpool. Be coming out of the bottom of the kettle through the chill through the uh, pump and up through the whirlpool coming Work. down. And we'll get to see that action in action here shortly. And then down here, so I have a uh, thermal well connector on the chiller for the thermometer, which is just I guess it's sort of reading ambient temperature. Well, it's probably a little warmer than that, but anyhow, that's the setup here getting ready for the uh, chill down process. So I had that little wrong and made an adjustment. Again, learning experience. <laughs> so, we have to, for the roll pull to happen, and again, I'm going to have to make some different length hoses, I think, here, because some of these are just crazy long. But if I'm out of the boil kettle, through the pump, through the roll chiller, to help sanitize that, and then up through the roll pull tube. So let me go ahead and give you guys a better shot. There you go. There's the whirlpool in action. Seems like it's working pretty well. There's nothing in there to really show you. I mean, I got a couple little particles in there, but there's not there's not really anything to really show you how well this whirlpool is working. But camera, I don't know how well it's doing justice of this thing, but it's uh, definitely spinning pretty well. So that should be pretty good. So I guess the idea here is we'll let this run for a few minutes and. Uh, this will chill down a little bit too in the process, and then we can start chilling uh, officially. I haven't turned the water on in the chiller yet, but you can see already, just in that little bit of time, we've already dropped what, 20 degrees just from wool pulling for about five minutes. Not too shabby. So, right now, the wort that's coming through there is coming through there at 190. Again, that's because the water's not on. But that's working pretty well. There's no leaks in the system, as far as I can tell. Uh, there is a small leak with the uh, the water hose, but I, I think I just need to get some better gaskets and maybe a better hose for that out, that water out. That black hose, it's an older hose. I, I, don't, I just think there's an issue. Okay, so we now have the water on. That's the minor leak I was telling you guys about. 
it's this black hose that's doing that. So it's not, don't worry, it's not the, the beer lines or anything, or our fake beer lines. Got the valve open probably a third of the way. And the beer was coming in at 190, and it's coming out at 79. If I move this gauge a little bit here on the, or sorry, the valve here, if I move it, make it a little bit faster, you can see that that goes up. So I guess we'll be slow, we'll be slowly cooling it down. So. I'm going to try to figure out the process on this. I mean, this is... I could cool it down like this and put it right into the fermenter at 78, 77. Mind you, this is a hot summer night, so that's not bad, considering. So I could get it down to a certain point here, and then I could just get it right over to the fermenter. I mean, this is... The kettle's at 165-ish right now. Yeah, 160, uh... 65. Sorry about the light, that's not really helping any. But yeah, 165. And it's coming out at 74. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. 